Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and today I want to talk about Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. And I read this book as part of my Four Centuries novel project in which I read four books from four centuries starting in 1719 and ending in 2019. And this is indeed my 2019 release. Now, apparently this book was actually released in December of 2018, but the author herself reassured me that the British edition wasn't published until January of 2019. So I'm counting this. This was recommended to me on Twitter and I am so glad that I ended up with this as my final choice for this project because this is a truly magical book and I love it. So let me tell you about it. If you haven't been following the hype that I clearly missed when this book was first released. This is a historical novel with a slight touch of magical realism. Now I have to say that I am not a huge fan of the genre of magical realism because every novel and short story that I've read in that genre has always just been too focused on atmosphere for my tastes and not focused enough on character, which is what I love about a book. So I was really glad to see that even though this arguably falls into the magical realism side of things, the characters are what really drives this story. This is also a historical novel because it is set in the 19th century and it's set in various towns and villages along the River Thames. Now the main focus of the story is a pub called The Swan. And the story starts when on an ordinary winter evening suddenly a man bursts into the swan clutching what looks like a dead child. And that sets everything in motion. Small town gossip starts happening and the identity of this child is the big mystery of the town. And several families come forward who might claim this child for themselves and yet she doesn't speak so it's hard to tell what actually happened and part of the story is the various characters in it trying to uncover the truth but then part of the story is the realization that actually the truth is a very subjective thing and that it's not necessarily an easy answer to what seems like an easy question which is who is that child how did she get in the river and what's going to happen to her next I want to talk about my favourite character in this book and that is a midwife and nurse named Rita, Rita Sunday. And I loved seeing the story through her eyes. Uh, her parts of the story were my absolute favourites because she is a very modern woman in a very Victorian society. As a midwife, she's in the unique position of earning a living through a uniquely feminine type of work. Um, but she's also a scientist. She's very interested in the science of medicine. She studies people. She wants to know how the body works. And so the mystery of this supposedly dead child that suddenly comes back to life is of great interest to her. She's also fiercely protective of her own independence and of her own freedom to work and live where she wants and to earn her own money and have her own capital in a way. But she's just one of the many wonderful characters that make up this story. Uh, some other favorites of mine are the photographer Harry Daunt, who in a way is much more of like an everyman character. He is uh, very visual as a photographer and he uses his photographic skills to carry his part in the solving of this mystery. And he is actually the man who bursts into the pub in the first place carrying this dead child. There's also the uh, landlady of the pub who is just like everyone's favorite literary mum. There's the two families who stake a claim on this child. Uh, one of them is a rich uh, land-owning couple and then the other one is a 
man with a slightly dodgy past and mysterious motivations. And then my favourite couple in this entire story are the Armstrongs, a farming couple who are just the happiest of families. And the thing I really loved about this book is the warmth that comes from it through those characters. And it gave the book a very fairy tale like feel. And of course, the atmosphere is there. The uh, imagery of the water, of the River Thames snaking its way through the countryside and using this river and the ebb and flow of water as a metaphor for the ebb and flow of the story and of how the characters interact with the plot. All of that is very atmospheric, very well crafted and very magical, but really what made me fall in love with this book were the characters. And again, I'm not usually a fan of books that tell a story from so many perspectives. And somehow it works because all of these characters are so distinctive, have so much personality, so much character and all have their own backstory and their own motivations. Y you feel like you're thrown into the middle of the story that's very rich in background because I'm sure I get the feeling that the author probably could have written a novel about every single one of these characters. They really feel like fully fleshed out human beings and I very much appreciated that. Now this really hits my personal reading tastes with its slow pace and I'm sure you've heard me say that many a times before, but I love books that really take their time with the plot, that don't hurry towards a conclusion, that build up the mystery very slowly, where the journey really is the destination. Because yes, while as I was reading it, I was very intrigued by the mystery itself about what happened to this girl, who is she, is the element of magic real or is it just imagined? And that's obviously one of the big questions in all magical realism type fictions. But the answer to the question wasn't what kept me going with the book. It was just the beautiful way that the story was told, the beautiful way in which these characters' lives are interwoven. It was the way that reality and tradition and magic and fairy tales all kind of play together to create a world that may or may not be realistic. And what I like about this book is that, yes, you could find a scientific explanation for everything vaguely supernatural sounding that happens in this book, but really it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether it is fantasy or whether it is realism, because the story itself is so magical, so fairy tale like that uh, that question kind of becomes completely unimportant. I think this is a really beautiful book. I can totally understand the hype around it. This is a book that's been popping up on my booktube subscription feed over the past year and I finally totally get it. So I would recommend that you read the story even if you are not a fan of magical realism, even if you're not a fan of historical fiction. Especially pick up this book if you are a fan of slow building character driven narratives and if you just want to spend some time with some of the most unique fictional characters that you can imagine. Like I said, I'm very happy that I have ended my year of reading through the centuries with this one and if you are interested in the rest of my journey through Four Centuries of Literature, I will link the Four Centuries playlist in the description box. The first book that I read was Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. Then I moved on to a bit of a German detective fiction with reading Das Fräulein von Scuderie by E.T.R. Hoffmann. My 1919 pick was a rather obscure Virginia Woolf novel called Night and Day, and now I'm finishing with Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. Thank you for coming along with me on this journey. Thank you for watching. Bye.